cool. Yeah, and it's calculated all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's all fine. Uh, as it changes, it does. Um, the efficiency does go down yeah. a little bit as it changes, but it will go back up again well, okay, um, yeah. over time. Um, and yeah. So anyway, you're interested. That's basically all that to do with. Um, yeah. To do with those. To do with those. Uh, being efficient at flying while in cruise. Yeah. Um, if you want to get like the best out of your plane, uh, so we can exit that now. Go back to the map for you, um, and we can just leave on that. So uh, to do that, because remember, yeah. So uh, that's the near, that's the airport for you, and then back again. That's really cool. That's your map. Uh, so uh, we can leave it on that, um, and go over to here. You said you wanted to know what these yes, buttons were. Yes. Yeah. All these buttons here, guys. Uh, right, so to demonstrate this, this is your uh, comms. Yeah. So you'll notice we've got uh, stuff that you'll recognise from other planes, nav 1, nav 2. Yeah. Uh, DME buttons. Yeah. Um, if you go to, uh, if actually this is a good way to, um, good way to uh, show you how to use the VOR points even though we're not going to be using them. Right. Uh, if you go over to, uh, actually you can do it on the MFD as well actually. Yeah. Uh, so nav. Yeah. Uh, use the nav scroller. Uh, the outer one changes the last digits, and the inner one changes the first one. actual digits. And uh, Sam, which is the one we're going to, is the VOR point we're actually yeah. going to at the moment. You can see on the map. Uh, that is a frequency of uh, one uh, one thirteen point thirty five. Ah, mine's double scroller. Thirteen. And then 35. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, actually, we're on the second nav at the moment. So if you want, because there are Shit. two, um, there are two navs. Yeah. Uh, so if you click inwards, uh, it switches. So put 113.35 into there. Um, into the first nav, into the standby of the first nav. 13.35. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and then you click the double arrow, this one here, button, uh, and that switches between the two. And you'll see it's came up with uh, Sam to show you that's the right. VOR point. We're yeah. not actually using the VORs. Uh, we're not, but it is actually controlled in there. Yeah. Um, and go back to the if you go back to the VOR, if you go back to Sam. Right. Yeah. Uh, and this can show us how this works. So uh, if you click Nav One, let, uh, on here okay, on the comms, yeah. you should. In a minute, hear the, you can hear it. Oh, I sorry, I'm actually outside the airplane. Explains why it's uh, a bit confusing. There we go. Um, you can actually hear it. Yeah. Uh, that's the Morse code for that. Um, yes. That one. Uh, I because I don't <laughs> we we don't need the Morse code. Um, you can turn it off if you want. Just yeah. Okay. Annoying us. Uh, because we don't actually need the Morse code because we've got um, we know exactly what yes. the point it is anyway. That's not particularly useful, but it is useful for when you're using VOR specifically, you're not using GPS or anything like that, and you want to know you're miles away from the waypoint. Yeah. And you want to, and you've got no signal for it, but you know in which direction it is, so you switch your heading on, yeah. your head in that direction. Mm. Uh, and when I'm doing uh, VOR flying, I do this quite a lot. Um, yeah. Especially with, uh, not with this plane because I have GPS at the time. Um, but with the uh, with other planes that don't have such a good GPS, I use just VOR flying. Uh, uh, I just use the VOR points. So uh, if I'm too far away, just switch it to heading mode. Yeah. Fly towards where I know the waypoint is. Mm. Uh, it's rough direction, and then I switch that on. And as soon as I get a signal, it'll start beeping at me. Right. Um, so I don't have to keep an eye on the screen all the time, going. Is it connected? Is it connected? Is it connected? I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because it will just start beeping at me when mm. it's connected. Because it will just get a signal. Oh, cool. uh, So that's the uh, comms there. That's very cool. I that's the that same with all planes, not specifically this one. But if you want to do that with this plane, your comms are all in the centre between the two planes. Yeah. So this flight uh, is going to take us... Uh, yeah. If you if you want to know how long it's going one to hour take 17. you... One hour seventeen. Yes? Uh, no. No, no, no. The um, that's your endurance, as I said earlier. The uh, remaining endurance and uh, the ETE are the same number. I still don't know what uh, the endurance right. is measured in. 
Uh, but if you go back to the uh, map view, uh, if you want to know time, in normal map view. Okay, right, yeah. Um, if you want to know time stuff, that's actually in your flight plan. Right. Uh, so if you click FPL, yeah. you can see uh, which waypoint you're going to at the moment. Okay. Uh, and the distance to it, the direction, and helpfully, the uh, time. Right, okay. So the time says um, 9.05, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that um, that's like in-game time. Yeah. And we can actually see what time it is over on the uh, primary flight display. Nor normally I have the two time, uh, oh, can you see that just there? Uh, in the corner it says yeah. 8.59. Uh, so, um, so it's going to be about, in about six minutes we should get to... Yeah, if it is one hour 17 we've... Must be. Uh, this whole flight. Oh yeah, because um, oh shit. What am I doing? Uh, how do we go back on this? Uh, click F. Because uh, if we go to that, it says one hour sixteen, or or remaining endurance. So that must be. Could be time. Yeah. That must be how long it is. Huh? So yeah, so that's obviously how long we yeah. have left. I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess um, right then. Sorry, I'm just being a bit dunce now. Um, I, I was trying to figure that one out earlier. Like, What's this? Is this how long is remaining? Uh, no, that's your zoom. Oh, see, okay. <laughs> that's how much your zoom uh, is. Yes, now. okay, cool. Yeah, um, so that's fine. Um, so, yeah, so all your, um, all your numbers and stuff are actually in there. And that's actually very accurate. Yeah. Um, it's far more, I, and the reason I like to actually use the GPS over. Uh, external programs to um, F, uh, FSX such as uh, Flight Sim Commander yeah. and stuff. Because Flight Sim Commander takes the airplane it you say you're in, yeah. takes your average stats of that airplane and goes, it will probably take you this long. Yeah. Whereas this gives a far better yeah. indication it's changing all the time. It knows exactly what the airplane's doing. Mm. Uh, and it, it knows far more stuff about the airplane that you couldn't know, let alone flight sim commander will know. Yeah. So, uh, why are you just looking at the uh, Well, I was just wondering if um, if it, like, moves in the air. If you oh, know. right. Okay. <laughs> well, I suspect it <laughs> um, But anyway, so... Uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else about this specific aircraft that we want to know specifically? Sure, there are, um, but we just can't. I mean, I'm sure there is, uh, but... Uh, other than that, it's very similar to, especially one thing I quite like is the autopilot. Yeah. Um, is exactly the same as the Cessna 172 that we learned to fly in original. But yeah, uh, it's, it's the it's same. Just, it's exactly same, the same, same thing, thing really. uh, Except now we have GPS. Uh, oh, uh, uh, what about, about uh, this over here? With this panel here, I mean, use this. Uh, that one, it, it oh, is shit. to do with ADF and. Um, as I'm not entirely sure what ADF uh, does, other than it being, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, ADF, I did know what the acronym stood for. Uh, finder, um, alternative direction finder, okay. or something like that. Um, I still don't. I don't know what it's used for, uh, but it is in every plane, so I probably should. It's not just this plane that has it in, even the uh, original, the default Cessna. Yeah. Uh, is it in? 172 has that in, uh, which, uh, so I should, probably should learn at some point. What it is, yeah, fair well, enough. <laughs> um, although that specific one only turns on or off, uh, so that doesn't actually do anything. If you actually go over to it, there is one switch and it turns on or off and does fuck all to the plane. Right. Uh, <laughs> you can see, uh, that's, it's, uh, it's this switch here. Right. And you can turn it on and off. That's, yeah, uh, that's, that's the use of that panel there. Yeah. It's yeah. just as useful as your ELT uh, button uh, up there earlier. Uh, so I don't know if we want to. I don't wait for the plane to break down. Yeah, it suddenly explodes. <laughs> it's really uh, I mean, I, we can go through the lights if you want to. Um, I've got. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because well, this is very yeah. much showing off the plane as well as coming. Kind of yeah, like. so if we go over to our lights display. Uh, there are there are two sort of main sections to it. Yeah. We have the external lights. Yeah. Uh, so you've got your beacon. Yeah. Uh, your landing lights. We can switch. We can switch them on. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, you got your taxi lights, your navigation lights, and your strobe lights. Yeah. Normally, for a normal flight, you want your nav, strobe, and beacon light on. Yeah. Uh, if, the, if it was the night time, it's, I mean, it's not night time at the moment. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, for landing, you want your landing lights, and for taxiing, you want your taxiing lights on. And you have those um, day or night, doesn't matter, I believe. I mean, I don't think it matters if you have them on during it. Yeah, I have to say, I don't think it matters. Well, with the landing lights, you're meant to have them on underneath 10,000 feet. I'm not sure if it's different for the GA. Um, it might be, I'm not sure. Because in a Boeing or something uh, like that, and anything under 10,000 feet with speed limit is also when you turn your landing mm -hmm. lights off. Because um, and that's some taking off as well. Right. I know a lot about this plane. Uh, airline regulations, I like them a lot. So uh, you're probably the one to talk to about. Oh, that. you can see the GPS uh, has and just yeah, changed. We have just changed GPS, so we are now uh, turning, making a turn. Uh, anyway, so the second section of the lights display that I hinted there was two sections. Uh, the if you want to move to the page. Yeah. Uh, the second section, so we had our external lights and we yeah. have our internal lights, which are all those knobs there. Oh, okay. uh, and uh, you have your instrument panels, you can see that turning on and off. Turn on and off. You have your oh, wow. uh, standby uh, ind uh, indicators. Yeah. Uh, so they're all your, so you've got your airspeed and your uh, heading and stuff like that, uh, and your altitude, all that's stuff really cool. that's actually already told to you on your GPS, yeah. but if that was to fail for some reason, you can still fly. Uh, you've got your pedestal, uh, which I'm, I can't quite remember what that is. Uh, I'm sure if we looked around the plane as we turn it on and off. And then avionics, uh, you've got, uh, if you look up, that's your GPS, your GPS light. Your GPS switches all lit up white if you turn oh, them so off. Like, yeah, oh, yes. Oh, cool. The difference there. Uh, and then above your head, uh, you also have, um, you have, you can switch those uh, those lights oh my God, they, so they're awesome. just they just light up the whole cabin. That's what I like that a lot. That's um cool. So there the, all the lights are uh, is there anything else I mean anything else at all about the aircraft in terms of flying purposes? Um probably not. Uh, really nice. we probably uh, are other than the we've done comms, we've done VOR, we've done GPS how to have the waypoints in, we did that right at the beginning. We've got the uh, autopilot, like where the heading is, uh, and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I don't think there is anything specific. Uh, I don't know if you want to pause the recording and then come back when we get to... Yeah, I think that's to probably a good stuff. idea, yeah. Uh, yeah. So guys, we yeah. are going to, uh, when we get to sort of the last waypoint, then we'll probably turn on and we're going to headings and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we'll be able to show you guys a little bit more about the controls of the aircraft, which is obviously pretty important. So I can tell you you how I think the aircraft feels in terms of realism, and if I think it feels accurate for what it is. Personally, uh, one thing I really like about this aircraft is it's very stable. Yeah. Um, by which I mean uh, normally, because I take off manually, uh, mm. generally, uh, and um, I don't know if you can take off non-manually, I've never actually done that in any plane. No, no, you tend not um, to. And the closest I've came to non-manually is that really the tow thing. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and um, you only get off jet jet as well, so yeah. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so I take off manually and then uh, sort of hold it steady and then pray that the plane doesn't flip out while I try and switch the auto yeah. on. Uh, one great thing about this plane is, is that I can use the joystick and then as soon as I leave it, yeah. it will hold its position. Yeah. It won't, I, I don't have to continuously put, pulling up on my joystick yeah. in order for the plane to be tilted As you know, if I always use a lot of trim when I'm mm. doing my taking off, I, know I use that to control the like, elevation. Yeah. It doesn't have the trim, so we can't. So, yeah, so normally, um, by which... What I'm trying to say is that uh, in in this plane, if you leave the joystick where it is, it will hold its position. Yeah. Uh, if you pull up, it will pull up, and if you push down, it will go down. Mm. But if you're at a nice, I mean, it's crazy, 45 degree climb. Yeah. And you leave the joystick in the middle, let go. Yeah. It will hold the plane at a 45 degree climb. That's really cool. Because you've gone back to the middle, it won't try and level itself out again. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and if you're a few hundred feet off the ground, that could be very difficult. Like yeah. straight after takeoff, you're trying to switch autopilot on. Mm. Uh, it could be very tedious if you're if you're having to 
hold one hand on the joystick, yeah, one exactly. hand on the mouse, and then try to change the views. One hand stuff. trying to change the views and use the keyboard. Mm. Uh, Which is why it's so useful to have two people in the cockpit, so you yeah. can kind of, you know. But if you're on your own, it's very easy, it's very stable. Uh, I've never crashed it. Yeah. Alright, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, so, yeah. Well, we're going to pause the recording. Yeah. We'll be back, well, we, we, I don't know how long it's going to take us, but we'll be back pretty soon and you guys can see the landing. I'm not entirely sure if this video is going to be one or two videos, so yeah, yeah. find out. <laughs> see you later. Okay, welcome back. So, there's currently 15 minutes, I believe, so I'm going to have to go to uh, flight plan. There we go, there's oh. currently 15 minutes exactly oh, to yeah. go, apparently, according to the plane. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to see Shore, but it is off to our right. Yeah, it's a very small airport. I mean, it's where all that um, snow is. It's over there, yeah. It's over here somewhere. Yeah, it's um, not so, yeah. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, why it's snowing. Did it just not animate uh, snow it any, further than the, uh, any further I'm than I'm not sure. It might be this is the area, that's the area all Vex covered. It might be that, because I'm not entirely sure. Uh, right, because I did. I had noticed that, like, how. Uh, yeah, it's quite strange, though, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, um, we are going to stop preparing for landing. I don't know if we should descend, maybe not quite, maybe when we um, next turn for our next waypoint. We probably want to, yeah, when we turn, minutes. we probably want to descend to about 2,000, because, like, quite short run. Yes. Be too high yeah, up. yeah, no, we don't want to be too high up at all. Uh, it's five minutes to our next waypoint, I think it is. Seaford's our next waypoint, uh, we've flown there quite a lot of time. Um, this is up Brighton actually, we're coming up to here. Um, and uh, we've got a Brighton Pier down here. Sure, um, Brighton International Airport, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's like, yeah, it is. Um, they do have international, uh, Southampton's pretty close I believe. Yeah, to Sean. So, but yes, it's, it's not in international airport, but it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, but that's what it's Nate, if, it's you, if you were to look it up, that's it's like. Oh, yes, that's maybe you're right, actually. Yeah. No, it's an international name. Oh, uh, yeah, you might be right. I, wasn't just, I wasn't just making that up because it's Nate, right? Uh, in fact, I wonder if we can use our sort of sun visor. No, we can't really. Well, let me go show you what the sun visor's like. Uh, you can see if we have it up like that, your sun's like that, and then when we take it down, it's like that. So it, it does genuinely make quite a difference, especially if it's an early morning flight. It's, it's, not, just like a, it's not just a... And the shadows on this is incredible, it's really good. Uh, we haven't been flying for quite a long time though, mm. <laughs> got to say. Um, I picked a different route. Yes. I think it does tell you in the, um, in the MFD, uh, your start, yeah, departure time and stuff. Uh, you, uh, no, I think it was on that screen you were on. Um, oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, EGKK to EGKK, the uh, flight plan leg. Okay, oh yeah, departure uh, time 8.40 or 8.39. 8.40, and we're going to get there at uh, what time? Uh, uh, it is according to uh, the thing now 9.56, so we've been flying for an hour and 20. So it's quite a long That's time for really quite a short flight. Well, fair, fairly short. Flight. I mean, this plane isn't that fast to be honest. I mean, it's obviously much faster than any form of road or boat. Mm. Um, but yes, but it's not hugely fast. We've just got some really nice clouds. I don't think I have them. Mine is completely clear. It might be though because oh, I've got all my clouds there. The clouds are just in a different place. Are we using Rex, by the way, for all these cloud textures? Window reflection. Window reflection, yeah. Oh shit. I actually open up. I don't know if you've actually uh, mentioned it. Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can open up the window. And then, uh, how do you close it? Uh, it's a bit difficult to go behind it. Um, that's sort of partly you can kind of hear the 3D sound there, it's really cool. Uh, we should be turning pretty soon. Uh, in in two now. minutes. Anyway, And then once we start, oh, I can actually see the end of the runway as well. Uh, oh. So we might actually want to start descending here, so I'm going to yeah. switch the um, 
switch oh, the altitude, down altitude down now. And it's going to do that to automatically. And you uh, can start to see that we're starting to descend. Actually, if you, um, this is something I found out earlier. If you go down to the autopilot panel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's no real need to do it now, but I might as well, we might as well do it. Mm. If you click vertical speed, uh, um, VS, which is this, okay, which is yeah. there. Uh, and then click up and down. Uh, so okay, yeah. down, let's go say a thousand uh, feet, feet per minute. minute yeah. We're going at 750 at the moment down. You can see yeah. uh, on our primary flight display, if you are to point that out uh, with your cursor, yeah. you can see our vertical speed there. So. Uh, if you click arm, yeah. now, and you'll notice we start to set. That's really yeah. cool. I like that. Nice. Um, obviously, uh, all commercial jets have that kind of feature as well. Yeah. Um, but this isn't any sort of commercial jet. Mm. Uh, we don't want to be over speeding, we're not, it isn't, so we're fine. Yeah, but that little thing isn't immediately obvious because after clicking VS, you do have to do a couple of things, it doesn't just automatically yes. click in. And even though it is actually quite good because you can kind of set it in a uh vertical speed, it's not like you do have to click arm yeah. before it will actually do anything for it. Uh, what, what altitude have you got it down to? Uh, 2000. 2000, 2000. Okay. So, we are, so we are descending, we should be. Um, any minute now it should turn. Um, yes, and 16 once, seconds. Once we turn and straighten out, uh, we might want to go on to heading. Uh, right, yes, that's a good uh, idea. So if you want to uh, uh, use the um, use the uh, heading knob on the yeah. uh, on either side of the uh, either one of the uh, displays, uh, they both have the same uh, same one. Yeah. Uh, and then. Uh, you know where the heading button is. It's by the autopilot, uh, along with them, along with all the other autopilots. Yes. Yeah. So what uh, what just, heading are we having? Uh, just uh, more or less where it is at the moment. But just use your like view out the window to like kind of more or less. Uh, okay. Figure cool. Figure out where you've got to go. Uh, so now we're just going to hit heading. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now it obviously takes it off now. Yeah. So now we're following the heading, and if you uh, look out the window, you'll be able to uh, sort of move the heading left and right. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah I see, I see. And I'm going to uh, turn the, um, I'm also going to turn the uh, our altitude down as well. Yeah, probably 1,500 uh, or 1,000. I quite, this is something I quite like to do. I kind of think of it as kind of automatic and not automatic landing because you're using the autopilot altitude control and the heading select to mm. control the aircraft. You're not physically actually moving the steering yes. wheel or anything, yeah, yeah, so it's I a know. nice smooth thing, but you are in control of actually, to actually turning left off to the right. Yes, it's so like, so yeah, so yeah, it's much different, it's different, like, control to be able to properly, control to be able to properly leave, leave, this, this bit here, because it says Brighton, Pearson, Pier, I believe, I mean, I might be wrong, uh, no, Brighton, no, Brighton is a city it? in the UK, I think so, Ooh. that's not an airport, is it, no, I think it is, yeah. I think it's That oh, is definitely the pier. Yeah, look, that's definitely the pier. Oh, you've seen by him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got my that. graphics pretty much maxed out, I believe, in this sim. I mean, I'm not actually sure what the uh, checklist is for um, landing. Uh, I, I don't actually put that. Might as well okay, take so this uh, okay. opportunity. This is definitely the right time. Airspeed. Airspeed between uh, 70 and 80 knots. Uh, well, come on, we don't need to switch that yet. Uh, but yeah. Uh, wing flaps as desired between 0 and 10 degrees. Uh, okay. Uh, but only once you're below 140, which we're not really. Uh, oh, they have different types of landing. Yeah, and then 10 to 20 once you're below 120 knots. And then 20 degrees full uh, and below 100 knots. Right. Uh, when flaps are full, you want airspeed between 60 and 70, 70 knots. Adjust. Uh, trim, adjust as necessary. Touch down, main wheels first. Uh, landing roll. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, nose wheel gently. Oh, sure. Reef, may date. What? Quite low. Oh, quite low. Uh, pull up. Uh, <laughs> there we go. 
Jesus. You were keeping, I thought you were flying this thing, Hamish. Yes, I know. I was expecting you to please. Brakes as required. So we can um we can put the fuel mixture back in now. Yeah. Uh, and start for the landing. Right, where is the airport? Um, yeah, just ahead of us, isn't it? Uh, if we go to our we we'll go to the map. Because uh, we do want to. I want you to sort of tell me the rough heading we should take. Okay, if I zoom right. Yeah, so if we turn, uh, because we want to actually line up with the runway, you know, yeah. I think the runway is like um, yeah. north to south and we're coming in from the east. So, right, just uh, go so we so are you want to you want to turn slightly to the uh, right with your heading. Okay. Uh, so that we're um, nice and uh, you can turn in yeah. and just go straight into the, um, into the runway, into the... Uh, I think it's 2 2 or something, so I forgot. Uh, for the landing, I can uh, look it up. Uh, um, here. Uh, EGKA, runway 0, 2, and 20. 20, um, okay, so, so we'll be at 200 then. Yeah. And you can actually see some. Yeah, quite large. You'll go to 1,500 instead. Uh, we can do it for one. A little bit of wind because you can kind of feel the aircraft shaking. This is Brighton City, guys, by the way. Uh, yeah. you can oh, see here's a pier. Yeah, you can see Hamish the um there um on um on the been primary here. flight display. IRL, we've been at that pier. Yeah, Hamish on the primary flight display. Yeah. If you want to have a look? Just stop looking out the window. Uh, yeah. Uh, you'll see the bearing that um our final waypoint, which is the airport. Oh uh, yeah, uh, and at the moment it's two six four. As as we fly past the end of the runway, it should actually oh, yes. part, it should get to right, two hundred. So we'll know exactly when oh, we're lined okay. up. Yes, so we can use that. Cool. Also, we can kind of look out the window as well. That will help us judge uh, what, what we're meant to be doing. Let's just change that. I'm actually recording. It would be a bit of a disaster if I wasn't. <laughs> Are right, we can put flaps up? Uh, down rather. Down, yeah. Yeah, so uh, as you don't, you don't, don't want to put it all the way yeah. down, but we do want to reduce our speed a bit because we have to be below 100 knots to have full flaps. That's what I said for the checkers. Uh, okay. Yeah, blimey, we do have quite a bit of wind, don't we? It's changing as well. I don't think we need full flaps yet, because otherwise it'll take an age to get back to, to get to the airport. Yeah. Actually, the airport's only there, brief. We can uh, we can level out of uh, perpendicular to the runway. Okay. What heading? Uh, so that would be two ninety. Yeah. It's two ninety. I can't see. Gonna put flaps on full. Uh, 90 degrees to the wrong way, and then we just have a. So we're not actually getting closer away from it or f further away or closer towards it. And then as soon as you, uh, as soon as we reach 200 on the bearing, yeah, we know we're actually in line with the runway. We just need yeah. to turn 90 degrees and fly us in. Cool. I don't know if you want to do that manually or. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, we'll do it manually. Yeah, so, so I tell you when to turn once, off the autopilot. And once, yeah, so uh, I'll set our, once we get to 200, I'll set our heading uh, towards it and it will straighten us out and then I can turn autopilot. Yeah, I just guess. need to sort of uh, keep on like speed. Uh, yeah, we might be going a little bit slow here, which is between 60 and 70, um, 60 and 70 knots. I know. I <laughs> uh, can't realise how. Yeah. It's 
This is full throttle. Yeah, you have also got full flaps there. I know. Yeah. There you go, I want to lift the flaps up a bit. If you're yeah, not getting fast, perhaps like a little notch. Ah, there you go, you can see our speed's increased a little bit. Okay, oh, should I start the turn? The as well. uh, not yet. Oh, it's also it's trying to climb. Is it? Yeah, well, we're 1,500. If I think we need to turn now, I'm going to turn, Engine. turn the forte pilot. Okay. Oh, it's turning automatically. Yeah, not Can I turn off autopilot, Reef? Reef, turn off now! Look! Ah. You really fucked that up. <laughs> what did I leave? Oh no, it's just we're really going like really, really, really vertical. <laughs> what, because we were going slowly? Yeah. Yeah, just lift the flaps up here, Nash. We don't need that much flaps. We're flying into the wind. Yeah, that's fine. So we, this is actually... We almost stalled at full throttle. It's not fine. Lift the flaps up. No, it's because it was on the, um, the auto altitude. That's yes. why. It's fine now. It's perfect. Because now we're just still gaining a little bit of speed. We want to try to lead off some speed. Yeah, Flying into the wind, which is good. It's not how I Pretty clear it. landing. I see one red light and three white. So it means we're just above the glide slope. Yeah, we've probably covered this in a previous video, but the lights next to the runway, yellow means we're too high, red means we're too low. If you get a half red and half yellow, there are four lights. That's what you Two want. red, two yellow, that means you're on the glide slope. So at the moment, I can only see yellow. Um, yeah. Too high coming in, and then too low. Yeah. Uh, too low at the end. Uh, just using the trim now. The trim is fully down. Quite a lot of speed, so I'm going to bleed off some of the speed. Quite a long runway, to be fair. So we shouldn't have any issues. Yeah. This is quite a small thing. No issues at all. Yeah, I did um quite wobbly. Yeah, it's quite wobbly. Hopefully we don't go massively off course. Yeah. Normally at this point I'm uh, I use I'm using ILS, obviously Sean doesn't have an ILS. You gotta be careful though, because of this mountain. It's uh, <laughs> it's quite a challenging landing. Especially with all bags, I don't believe it's in the default. I mean, we could have came in from the sea, but no, that's not going to run there either. We can get a little bit longer. It's and not really turn the power off and tilt us upwards. There we go, we landed. So, bit of a bumpy landing, but. Okay. Hitting brakes, there we go. Perfect, right, we could bring the flaps up. Just turn your throttle down just a touch in the Annoyingly, I can't control the throttle because I've got my reverses on to make me not have throttle, if you know what I mean. Right, uh, tell me what directions to go. Uh, I keep going. I do like this plane because it does turn very quickly, which is nice. I like that. And you could probably. Um, turn here? No, take the uh, next right. A little private jet on the. 
Like hemp soy there? Yeah, yeah. A few planes and stuff. Take this right here. So nice and slow. You meant to take it at 10 knots, so at least some commercial just to. A bit sharp finish. Yeah, I know. But anywhere here, you can park up on the grass. Turn it on left. On the grass. No, Hamish, that's. Um, Shit. Oh, that's a daisy. Thank God we haven't got collision to send on. That was just a quick, you know, a quick bit of MLG manoeuvrage. Oh, that's okay. the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo. Uh, right, so let's just turn this baby off then. So we've okay. turned off procedures then. Well, for turning it off, it's uh, basically the uh, same as um, reverse of turning it on. So you pull out the, uh, for the mixtures first. Yeah. There we go, like that. There we go, and it should start to turn off. Uh, you to put the electrics off. So beacon and uh, the switches as well. Oh. Yeah, a beacon, there you go. Yeah, oh, and it um, should be off. That's it now. Yeah, you, got uh, the you can tell it's off because it always goes to slant, this, this gauge here. Uh, your kind of your horizon altimeter, or whatever you want to call it. It's always that slant, which is quite cool. It's been quite a long flight. Longer than I expected, actually. I was hoping that it was going to be a little shorter. Oh well. Yeah, the shadows, though, are beautiful. I absolutely love it. Hopefully, this is a plane me and we could uh, fly on Vatsim together or whatever, or Vatsim or Iveo together, um, mm -hmm. which I think would be really good fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've really enjoyed flying it today, actually. It's been, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's a really nice plane. It's a nice small plane. Um, but it is, like you said, it's one of those planes you can just kind of get the hang of. Um, and it's advanced enough because it has all the sort of relevant features which you'd need for planning a flight and all that kind of stuff. So, Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Good job from Carinado. Uh, if you want to buy a plane, I definitely recommend this one. I absolutely love it. Uh, that's it from us. Thank you very much for watching this sort of flight video. Uh, it's been cool because we've been... Uh, Sort of teaching me rather than the other way around which has been quite cool uh, we hopefully we will do some more regular flight sim videos soon um, so yeah we'll yeah. see you next time guys see goodbye